This video lecture is meant to explain the rate law problem, the first rate law problem that is in the textbook. We are given a data table with three trials, and what we are looking at is a chemical reaction that is A plus B turning into C. And so what we're trying to figure out is what is the effect of the concentration of A, that's what the brackets mean, um, on the rate of the reaction, and what is the effect of the rate of the concentration of reactant B on the rate of the reaction. So what we um, typically start with is the just setting up a rate law expression, where rate is equal to some rate law, rate constant, times the concentration of reactant A to some power, uh, exponential power N, times the initial concentration of B raised to some exponential power M. So what we are going to do here, we're going to use the data given to us in the data table, and we're going to first try to figure out what is the effect of the concentration of A on the rate of the reaction. And to do that, we're going to have to make sure that B remains constant in order to figure out the pure effect of the concentration of A on the rate. So we're going to go to the data table and we're going to find two trials. There's three trials in total. We're going to find two trials where B is staying constant. So that looks like trial one and trial two. So here we have trial one. The concentrations of A is um, bigger for trial two than it is for trial one. We're going to see what mathematical effect it has on the rate. So we're going to set up a uh, the basic equation. We're going to set it up so that uh, trial 2 is over trial 1 because uh, the bigger number over the smaller number just makes the math easier. So we're going to set up the concentration of A from trial 2 over the concentration of trial A, uh, I'm sorry, over the concentration of A for trial 1, and again trial 2 over trial 1 only because trial 2 was a bigger number, so it's going to be... Um, it's not going to be a fraction. Okay, so then we're going to set that equal to the rate from trial 2 over the rate for trial 1. Okay, so here's we're going to figure out what the impact of the concentration of A has on the rate. So now it's a matter of plugging numbers in. The concentration of A for trial 2 was 0, 1.0. We're not going to plug units in here because we're just looking to find the mathematical relationship. We're going to divide that by the concentration of A um, from trial number one, and we're going to set that equal to the rate from trial two, which is 8.0 times 10 to the negative three, divided by the rate from trial one, which is 4.0 times 10 to the negative three. So what we are going to see here is that as we simplify, um, Oh, well, let me step back for one second. So really what we're trying to figure out here is the um, exponential power. So where you need to figure out um, what exponential power A has uh, the effect on the rate. So simplifying, this is going to be 2 to the nth power, and that's got to be equal to um, 2. Those both, both sides of this function is reduced down to 2. So we now can see that n is equal to power of 1. So we know back up here in our in our rate law that if we can then modify this, so we now know that this is an exponential power of 1 up there. Now we have to do the same thing for uh, the effect of b on the reaction rate. So to figure out the effect of B on the reaction rate, we need to find two trials where A is staying constant. So A is staying constant for trial 3 and for trial 1. So we're going to see the effect of um, B on the reaction rate. So we're going to look at trials 1 and 3 only. And we can see here that trial 3 is larger than trial 1. So we're going to set it up so that trial 3 numbers are over trial 1 numbers. So that is going to look like um, reaction, the concentration of B um, from trial number three divided by the concentration of B from trial one. That's going to be set equal to the rate from trial three divided by the rate 
from trial one. And again, remember what we're trying to figure out is what is the effect of this uh, concentration of B from trial three to what magnitude um, exponentially does it have on the rate? So um, let's go ahead and plug those numbers in and see what we can figure out M is going to be. So the concentration of B from trial three is 0 0.10, that's this number. We're gonna divide it by 0 0.050, and that's gonna be equal to the rate of trial three, 1.6 times 10 to the negative two, divided by 4.0 times 10 to the negative three. Keeping in mind that what we're really trying to figure out is this exponent. When we reduce this down, we're going to see that this is equal to 2, but this is equal to 4. So what power do we have to bring 2 to in order to get 4? That's got to be an exponent of 2. So we can now see, going back up to our rate law, that the exponent we're going to have to put on B is going to have to be a 2. Okay. So that right there becomes your rate law expression. Now once you have the rate law expression, sometimes you're going to be asked to figure out what is the overall reaction order. The overall reaction order is when you are, it's just a, a quick sum of the exponents. And so here we've got an exponent of 1 and an exponent of 2. So the overall reaction order is three. This is just to kind of give you a quick idea of what total impact the reactants concentrations have on the rate. Another question that you will most likely be asked for is to find the rate constant. So effectively what we are going to be doing is we are going to be rearranging this equation for K. So if we were to do that, if we rearrange this equation for K, we're going to have to divide both sides by the concentration of A and the concentration of B. So that rate is going to be divided by the concentration of A to the first power um, and B to the second power. So this is how we rearrange the equation to solve for the rate constant K. But now we're going to actually pick any one of your trial data points and you're going to plug them in for rate, you're going to plug it in for A and B and mathematically simplify that and then we're going to get an actual number for the rate constant K which is very specific for this reaction. So let's go ahead and do it. Um, common sense makes me think that we should just pick the numbers from trial one. It should work out the same no matter which trial you pick. So picking trial one's data We've got a rate of 4.0 times 10 to the negative 3. We're going to divide it by the concentration of A from trial 1, which is 0 0.050. And here is where um, we do need to include the units. So I need to go up and put those units in for the rate. The rate is the moles per liters per second. So it's the concentration that gets used up per second. Yeah, that's what the rate unit is, is telling you there. So going back to the denominator, I got to put in the concentration of B for reaction or for trial one, uh, which is also 0 .50, 0 0.050. And again, that's moles per liter. Um, but that number is going to get squared. So it gets a little wonky here, but just stay with me. So if we simplify, Right, we still have 4.0 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per liter per second. I didn't do anything uh, to the numerator, but um, multiplying 0 0.050 times 0 0.050 times 0 0.050, we get 0 0.00025. And here it's moles to the third power divided by liters to the third power. Okay. Now we're gonna to start to uh, cancel out some units and we can see here that the moles, the mole unit up here, there's one of them, it's gonna cancel with one of the moles in the denominator. So that's gonna go down to mole squared. 
and we're going to see that leaders in this denominator is going to cancel with one of the leaders in the denominator of the denominator, reducing that cube down to a square. But notice that what we still have going on up here is we still have seconds, but we gotta remember that there's a one up here because there's just no unit in that particular numerator. So now it's a matter of we gotta simplify the math and we have to simplify the unit. So let's do just the math part because that's pretty straightforward. Um, we're gonna end up to two sig figs. We're gonna end up with the number 32 here. And then when you simplify all of this, we're going to, um, what will happen is the fraction in the denominator is gonna end up inverting. So we're gonna have liters squared um, over moles squared. But then remember up here, we still had this unit hanging out in the denominator. So it's liters squared per mole squared per second. So that right there with that crazy unit, that is the rate constant for this particular reaction with this particular set of data points. That's it. That's all we need to do for problem number one.